It is our obligation to follow him and to be in him. But understand, Deacon White, it is our choice. We can choose to walk in the light or we can choose to be in darkness. Well, come on. But the blessing that is, if we follow him, he promises to illuminate our way. And we must understand that we have the light that leads to eternal life. Yes, God. Yes, we do. When, when our way seems obstructed, we have the light that leads to eternal life. In times of turmoil, we have the light that leads to eternal life. In times of weakness, we must remember that we have the light yes. that leads to eternal life. In moments of despair, Sister April, we have the light that leads to eternal life. When you feel like you've been overlooked, remember, you have the light. I don't know about you, but I am grateful on today that Jesus allows me by the confession of my faith to walk in the light. God, he has made a way out of nowhere. He has been our protection. He has been our great physician. He's been our sustainer. He's been our strength in times of weakness. He's been our help. And he's been our God. The songwriter says, I am so grateful that God is in my life. What would life be without him? It would be dark and it would be grim. See, Jesus cheers me. He will my comfort be. I am grateful. I'm truly grateful. Christ is in my life. I am grateful on today for Jesus Christ. I understand, my brothers and my sisters, there's going to be struggle, but I am grateful that Christ is in my life. I understand that we're going to deal with hardships, but understand, we are grateful because Christ is in our life. I understand that this world can be an unbalanced place, but we give God praise because he's in our life. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. I am grateful, truly grateful, that God is in my life. I've come by here to let you know that you no longer have to live in defeat. You no longer have to walk around broken because no matter what your circumstances might be, you have a right to walk in the light. The songwriter says, walk in the light, beautiful light, come where the dew drops, a mercy shine bright. Oh Lord, shine all around us by day and by night. Jesus, he is the light of the world. You have the right to walk in the light. You have the right to walk in right relationship with God. You have the right to walk in right relationship with each other. You have the right to walk in your purpose. You have the right to be resilient and you have the right to maximize your potential yes. if you walk yes. in the light. Yes. Yes. We'll see in the text. God is speaking to Jeremiah in the days of King Josiah. God is speaking to Jeremiah in regards to faithless Israel. And I want you to understand that Israel is the northern kingdom. God's issue 
with Israel was that she had been unfaithful by worshiping idols everywhere possible. See, I want you to understand that this worshiping of idols just was not in ceremonial worship. But worshiping idols had become their lifestyle. What you trying to say? We have the Lord worshiping idols as a lifestyle. I want you to understand that Israel's failure was to return and a failure to repent. They've, they failed to identify their wrong. See, when we refuse to repent, we make a conscious effort not to return to God and to walk in darkness. See, in the Hebrew, the word shun can be translated either return or repent. But see, Judah, now we're talking about Judah. Judah saw that God had issued a decree of divorce through the exile. This divorce was a punishment, not a permanent disconnect. But see, Judah witnessed the exile and paid it no mind. Judah as a nation continued to do what it wanted to do. There was no return to God. There was no repentance for their sinful behavior. However, in the midst of not returning, they fronted like they did. <laughs> They continue to do what they wanted to do and step up and hold missionary about the church like they did. Priest Larry, Mo, I'm doing the best I can. In the midst of not repenting, Judah wanted the church folk to think that they had. I know we can't relate to that here. <laughs> but because of this, Judah's prayers and their sacrifice were not offered in genuine repentance and genuine faith. And God declared faithless Israel more righteous than Judah because Israel was more honest about their faithlessness. <laughs> Therefore, God commissions Jeremiah to make an extraordinary offer of grace to Israel. Israel is to repent. And if they repent, which means turn from their sin and turn to God, God will not deal with them in anger because he is merciful. Turn to your neighbor and say, he is merciful. Turn to your other neighbor and say, he's still merciful. Isn't it good to know that we serve a God that is full of grace and mercy even in the midst of our foolishness. Isn't it good to know that we serve a God that loves us in spite of who we are? Isn't it good to know that we serve a 
God that is ready to deliver us from ourselves. Israel is to acknowledge her guilt. Israel is to acknowledge, to acknowledge her infidelity. And how was she unfaithful? She was unfaithful by worshiping foreign gods. We must understand that repentance leads to acceptance. God said, on today, return to me because I am your master. Return to me because I am your Lord. Return to me because I am the true king. Return to me because I'm your all and I am in all. Return to me because I am the way, the truth, and the life. Return to me because I am the bread of life. I am living water and I am the light of the world. So with that statement, what must we, what must we do if our genuine desire is to live in the light of Jesus Christ. Number one, we must truly have a desire to be in the light. This means when we have gone astray, we must have a strong desire in our spirit to return and repent for the contrary thinking that we have in our sinful behavior. Number two, we must be willing, listen closely, to remove anything, person, places, thoughts, deeds, or things that are unpleasing to the Lord. Amen. These things that are unpleasing to the Lord stunt our spiritual growth. These things that are unfruitful paralyze our ministries. Number three, plow your heart and don't plant weeds in the soil. This means our obligation is to prepare our hearts to be nourished by God. And we must be cautious not to try and satisfy ourselves with something that can destroy us. I am grateful and I am glad on today that God has blessed us with the opportunity to live in the light. As we strive to grow in God, we thank God for the opportunity to live in the light. We have all experienced loss, but we thank God for the opportunity to live in the light. Times may be uncertain, but Ray, we thank God for the opportunity to live in the light. Times are going to get you frustrated, but when those times of frustration comes, throw up your hands and thank God for the opportunity to live in the light. The songwriter says, I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply. Staying within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry, and from the waters he lifted me. Now safe am I. See, when nothing else could help, love lifted me. When I was lost, 
that is unpleasing to our Lord. Because he knows things will stunt our growth. And they are unfruitful in our lives. And they will paralyze our ministry. And last but not least, go like this. Guard your heart. Guard your heart. Plow your heart. And don't plant weeds in the soil. I don't know about you, but I like a nice lawn. Nice and green. With no weeds. Why would you work, work on your, your heart and plant weeds in it? Why would you work in your garden and plant weeds in it? Why would you work on your own heart and compromise it? Stand on the promises of God. He's taking us individually and collectively to a higher plane. Turn to your neighbor, say higher. Turn to your other neighbor, say higher. Say it like you mean it, say higher. Point to yourself, say I'm going higher. Go to the church and God bless you.